Sonic film The Eternity of the Sonic Underground Chapter 3 The Talk Between Sonic, Shadow and Silver When they arrived at the shack, they went right in front of the door. Shatter gestured his hands to Silver to knock on the door, which he did. Ah, uh, guys, I thought I told you to leave me be. Sonic, it's us, Shadow and Silver. We would like to speak with you. Look, we know that you're depressed, but we want to help you. Your friends wanted to help too, but we can't if you won't let us. Everything stays quiet until Shadow had enough and knocked on the door very loudly. Sonic, stop being such a crybaby and open the door. This isn't like you at all. The Sonic we know is always positive in any kind of situation. Even in the stickiest situations, you always find a way. You always give everything you got in every challenge. You always give everyone a chance, even if they intended to hurt or kill you in the beginning. You try to cheer us up if we're in a bad mood. You never let the darkness or hatred in your heart. You are always ready to help everyone in any way you can. You never give up or give away in battle, even when you were severely injured. And most of all, you can show everyone the way to the light by telling them what they should do. And I'm one of them. You showed me what I was doing was wrong. You taught me the right thing to do. I owed you everything, but all I did was push you away, giving you nothing but hatred and disrespect. I kinda hate to admit it, but the reason I did that is because I don't want to lose another friend. I'm scared that it might happen again, just like in my past. I lost my very first friend, Maria. She was like a sister to me, but now, this time, let me help you and give me a chance to make it up for the things I've done. Silver was surprised to what Shatter just said, and Sun was completely moved by what he said about him.
Well, I guess it's the right time now. I think I'm ready to tell them about my past. He opened the door and revealed himself to them. With a very wet face and red eyes due to the tears and sadness, he kept in eight years. Shadows and Silver's hearts were softened when they saw him like that. Then, the unexpected happened. Sonic fell into Shadow's arms, crying his eyes out again. Shadow had no choice but to hug Sonic until he calms down, while Silver rubbed circles on his back. It lasted for five minutes, and Sonic was now completely calmed. Feeling better? Yes. They got up, and Silver began to notice a few differences from Sonic. He was now wearing a brown bandana around his neck, his once beige arms are now blue like the rest of his body. And he wears white athlete's tape around his hands, arms, legs, and sneakers. Ha! <laughs> and so do you too, Silver. They laughed a bit and it died down quickly. Well, I guess I should tell you and the gang about my past. Yeah, that would be great. It might make you feel better. I will race you there, guys. Hey, no fair! You got a head start, Sonic. Ah, some things never change. Then, using his psychokinesis, he boosted up to catch up with the two speedy hedgehogs.